Yes, that was a real clip from Netflix's Resident Evil. There is context for it, but it's stupid even with context. Hey, are you a Resident Evil fan? Well then, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's nothing for you here on this show called Resident Evil. But luckily for you, I watched the whole thing twice, so you don't have to. In this video, we'll be taking a look at season one of the show and asking ourselves the age old question. Why, time and time again, is it so hard for them to get this right? The first episode starts off by introducing us to the main character. Oh boy, you may be saying to yourself, uh, I wonder who it is, Jill Valentine? Chris Redfield? No, it's Jade. Here she is, baiting some zombies with a bunny. See the zombies? Soak it in, trust me. The precious few moments that the zombies are on screen this thing need to be savored, okay? Anyway, Jade has some kind of axe body spray that makes her undetectable to the zombies, but then, whoopsie, she pricks herself and suddenly the zombies remembered how to smell. <laughs> We get a brief chase scene before Jade just roasts all of them, which frustrates her because she was researching them. Fucking stupid! Now it's at this point, a giant caterpillar shows up. Nothing says Resident Evil like a big ass bug, am I right? But hold on, because now it's time for some whiplash. Now we're in a flashback to when Jade was a kid, and this is the formula for the show, basically. They go back and forth between future and past, and almost every time they leave at least one of them on some kind of cliffhanger. Sorry if you were interested in the giant infected caterpillar, but it's time for some teen girl drama. This is Resident Evil we're talking about after all. In this scene, there's an annoying Billie Eilish song that I can't play for you, and the only reason I even mention it is because as the Billie Eilish song is playing, it's revealed that Jade's sister's name is Billy. Now, I don't know why they did this. If I had to guess, it's because maybe they asked Billy if they could use one of her songs, and she replied something like, uh, Sure, but name a character after me. Anyway, Jade and Billy's dad is played by Lance Reddick, a phenomenal actor that you may have seen in Lost or The Wire, or most notably on the Eric Andre show where he revealed he wished he was LeVar Burton. I wish I were LeVar Burton. He plays their dad, Albert. On behalf of the Umbrella Corporation, welcome home. Hmm. New Raccoon City used to be an old factory town. Whoa, whoa, whoa. New Raccoon City? Umbrella? Albert. Call me crazy, but it's starting to seem like this show might have something to do with Resident Evil. I mostly just read Zootopia porn, so. Oh my god. So we're just gonna move on from that weird little comment and check back in with future Jade who's in the middle of some Zootopia Rule 34 of her own. You gotta wonder how she's getting out of this one. Maybe in true Resident Evil fashion she'll find a working rocket launcher amidst the rubble? Oh, or some random guys could just come up and shoot it. That works too. So the guys who shoot the caterpillar discover that Jade is a survivor of New Raccoon City. She's a survivor. Back to teenage Jade, I want you to listen to how her dad, Albert, answers the phone. Wesker. Ah, so he's Albert Wesker, which makes Jade, Jade Wesker. Wesker is arguably the main villain of the early Resident Evil games, and he's never really struck me as a family man. I don't need anyone else. <laughs> So the picture they've painted of Wesker so far is kind of unexpected. Like, what's he doing playing house? Oh, and there he is injecting himself with Jade and Billy's blood. Yeah, that's more like the Wesker that we know. Seven minutes is all I can spare to play with you. So then the girls go to school and they start this bully plot line. So you're like a freak. No. Basically, Billy gets instantly bullied as soon as she gets to the school. Why? Character development. Here they are, fighting. I honestly really don't like most bully scenes that I see in these TV shows. A lot of times it doesn't serve any purpose except to make you feel sympathetic towards one of the main characters that the writers 
want you to feel sympathetic towards. Uh, and the quickest way to do that is to show some one-dimensional, unreasonable bully character, just start picking on them for no reason. Stranger Things does it all the time. They love bully characters. They get at least one new evil bully every uh, new season, but that's for another video. On a more interesting note, even after we see Wesker inject himself with Jade and Billy's blood, we're shown some scenes that seem to indicate that he's not quite the Wesker that we're familiar with from the games. For example, he's shown to be disinterested in making a potentially harmful drug widely available. I hate it. It's a far cry from how he was in his last game appearance, that's for sure. Ensuring complete global saturation. And he's even shown to tolerate a lot of back talk from his teenage daughters, which is kind of funny. Fuck you! Jade! Jade! So while watching this episode, you start to think, what Albert Wesker is this? Because he's so different from the one in the games. And it's a little jarring for the one character we've seen so far that's actually from Resident Evil, who's known to be this over the top uh, cheesy villain, uh, to in the show be kind of a wet blanket? Who lets his teen daughter say F you to him? Fuck you! Jeez. Jade! All right, so Future Jade, are you keeping up? We're, we're with Future Jade now. She's being held at this like Mad Max desert stronghold uh, where it's revealed that- I'm sorry. Oh wait, hold that thought. Misunderstood teen hero Billy Wesker has to confront her bully. It does not go well. Like I said before, I'm just not interested in this little bully plot line, so I'll go ahead and skim you through what actually happens. Jade actually ends up beating the bully for Billy, and Billy resents her for it, and Wesker threatens her dad, who puts a stop to her bullying for good. You threatened my daughter. Okay, so with that out of the way, it's back to Mad Max, and in this scene, it's established that the zombies are called Zeros. Remember that, because it's really stupid. I study zeros. I'm just kidding, no I'm not. But usually the reason in movies, games, and TV shows that they give zombies a special name like this is for world building. It's, uh, it's like they don't even have the concept of a zombie in this universe. But a couple episodes from now, we're gonna actually hear one of the characters say the word zombie. Um, I just think it's funny, like if the word zombie exists in your world, why would you call them Zeros, which is a name that they never call them in the games, but anyway. Sorry. It's not easy to talk about, I imagine. Aw, look at that. Jade and the Mad Max guy are having a little heart to heart. Maybe this is the start of an unshakable alliance for these two characters. Turns out you're the number one most wanted. Well, it was a nice thought. Now at this point, we've spent roughly two minutes with Future Jade, so I know you're getting antsy wondering what's going on with the angsty teen bully magnets in the flashback, the main attraction of this Resident Evil TV show, so let me fill you in. Billy finds out that Umbrella is doing animal testing, and she is not happy, because you see, Albert Wesker's daughter in this show is an animal rights activist. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed she had a meat is murder poster in her room earlier. So she and Jade decide to break into Umbrella HQ and rescue the animals. Please state your name. Hello, this is Albert Wesker. It's kind of funny to me on rewatch, yes, I said rewatch, that they decided to give uh, her this interest in animal rights. If you're wondering if it ever comes up again after the first episode, uh, the answer is no. In fact, well, you'll see. But yeah, we need to move the plot forward, okay? So she loves animals right now. Back to future Jade, uh, Umbrella shows up to collect her and we're introduced to Baxter, Umbrella's corporate stooge, who ends up doing some super villain shit. Go. But also stumbles on the stairs. This is the start of a disturbing trend where you're not really sure if you should be taking Baxter seriously or not. Anyway, Jade's on a high octane escape when, huh, just kidding, it's back to the kids now. Hey, look, there's a zombie dog. Finally, something from the games. Anyway, Billy gets bit by the dog. Uh, this is the climax of the first episode that puts the rest of the season into motion. Jade also beats the dog to death with a fire extinguisher. 
cut back to the present, we get a revelation from I'm not sure if I should be taking him seriously or not, Baxter over here. Your sister's been looking for you. And that's episode one of Netflix's Resident Evil. So, what'd you think? You excited for the rest of the season? I remember after the first episode, I was really put off by the entire conceit of the show. Like for a series that's just called Resident Evil, you would think it would cover the classic canon storyline. But instead, we're getting what feels like a spin-off, or judging by the way Albert Wesker's acting, possibly even a what-if scenario. It's the kind of thing I would maybe be down for if it had a subtitle, like if it was called something like Resident Evil, The Wesker Chronicles, you know, a clear spinoff. I could be down for a Wesker spinoff, but instead it's just called Resident Evil. My main question about all this is, why do they always make it so hard on themselves with these Resident Evil adaptations? There's always some crazy new character like Alice or Jade in this one, when they have a perfectly good cast of characters to choose from and a perfectly good storyline with the original game's mansion incident. It's all there, ready to go, just do it. You don't have to go off the deep end with dollar store Jack Black over here. I feel a little bad about the dollar store comment. The guy who plays Baxter does a fine job. And in fact, most of the actors in the show do a fine job. It's just the writing that holds it back. But to fully understand that, we're gonna have to move on to The more discerning among you may have noticed that in the last section I only covered episode 1 and in this next section I'm covering the next 5 and that's because the show starts dragging. There's basically only 4 story threads that progress over the next 5 episodes and none of them receive any major developments until episode 7. Here are the 4 threads. Billy is slowly transforming and getting more violent. Jade and the random guy from the neighborhood discover that Umbrella is up to no good, and Jade becomes suspicious towards Albert in particular. Jade and Billy's relationship grows increasingly strained. And finally, Albert and the Umbrella CEO make constant, passive-aggressive comments to each other because they don't like each other very much. That's it. That's basically all that happens over the next five episodes in terms of major plot development. So let's go ahead and check out the funny parts. You may remember that at the end of episode one, Jade is just jumping into a horde of zombies. Since this is Resident Evil, she's perfectly fine after falling 30 feet to the ground. Anyway, young Billy's dog bite gets infected. I don't think I'm a dog person anymore. <laughs> and Albert ends up doing some hashtag just Wesker things again. But more importantly, in episode two, we are introduced to Evelyn Marcus, CEO of Umbrella. Evelyn Marcus, I run this fucking company. And if you know your Resident Evil, yes, it's fair to assume that she's a relative of Dr. James Marcus, who headed up Umbrella's executive training school. Now, Evelyn is suspicious of Albert, and get ready for this to be a constant dynamic over the next five episodes. Oh. Say hi to the girls for me. Just so you know, there's like eight more scenes with passive aggressive dialogue almost exactly like this. So I'm just gonna show you that one and you get the gist. Now I'd like to talk about future Jade because episode two is the first episode where we start to see that she's not a very likable character. For example, she meets a widow who was keeping her zombie husband captive in the bathroom and clearly was going through some traumatic grief avoidance. And Jade's response to the whole situation is super fucked up. And this is a pattern with Jade. She's not sympathetic towards other people's problems. In fact, she only really cares about herself, which makes her really hard to root for. Additionally, there's another troubling pattern with future Jade that has more to do with the writing than her actual character. And that's that whenever she meets someone who A, helps her out, and B, gives her any kind of backstory, that character will, almost without exception, be shortly killed. For example, after Jade jumps into the horde of zombies, she catches a ride with this guy. Umbrella's off to you. You got a big fucking target on your back and I don't want one on mine. And he dies seconds later. <laughs> and you remember that Mad Max guy? All I'm saying, keep it in mind as we follow future Jade's story, okay? Checking back in with past Jade, she meets Simon, or as I will call him henceforth, Hacker Boy. Umbrella blocks turn sites. Simon's like, 
the only one that could get around the firewall. He and Jade start looking into what Umbrella is up to these days. I want to get past Umbrella's firewall. Alright, I'm in. Meanwhile, Billy is slowly losing it. Billy! Go away! No! We have to talk! Okay, back to future Jade. Sorry, I know I keep doing this. It's just, it's how the show's structured, okay? It's hard to, I can't make a video about this without going back and forth, future Jade, past Jade, future Jade, past Jade, but back to future Jade, okay? Remember like one minute ago when I said that any character that helps Jade and gives her any sort of backstory is, uh, well, you know. Future Jade meets up with a family that just wants the best for their son, you see. He's been through so much. We just want to raise him amongst family. Definitely invested in their characters, and I can't wait to see their arcs as the show progresses. So anyway, back to the past. Billy's still slowly transforming, and Albert's still squabbling with Evelyn. You're risking millions of lives for what money? Haha, <laughs> that's our Albert Wesker, all right. He's a man of the people. Albert! Now, don't think I've forgotten. I did promise you some funny moments. So we'll take a break from talking about the plot, which has slowed to a practical standstill at this point, and cover some of my favorite small funny moments throughout these episodes. Okay, this part's so funny. Jade's in class texting Billy, trying to find out how she's feeling, and she doesn't give Billy even five seconds to respond to her text before she's like, um, hello? Now, this is to show their relationship is crumbling into turmoil, remember? One of the four main plot threads that I covered earlier. Meanwhile, Billy's still doing her thing, of course. Oh, oh, there's this funny part where this guy who's investigating Umbrella pulls over his car and he follows every person with raccoon in their name on Twitter. I'm not kidding. He just goes down the list and he follows all of them. And then he just starts driving again? Like, what? There's also just a lot of cringe throwaway lines. The chronic masturbators? What about us? On that schedule, we'll make mistakes. You ever been peed on before? Once? College. I freaking love SpongeBob. I mean, his best friend's a starfish. All right, we've had our fun. Back to the story. Uh, so future Jade makes it to the other side of the fire swamp and wrestling with rodents of unusual size. Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. <laughs> Only to be ambushed by Umbrella and Baxter, where we're treated to more of his zany dialogue. It got pretty crazy back there, right? Like, ah! Brand monsters. <laughs> but then Jade and Baxter are captured by another group called the Brotherhood. Now, the Brotherhood is a group that they try to build up as being super scary earlier in the episodes. That's Brotherhood territory. The Brotherhood skinned people alive. <sighs> Umbrella. But they're barely in the show before they inevitably get their asses kicked. Hey, what are you doing? Fucking <laughs> hurry! So basically, the Brotherhood's nothing. More interestingly than them, while in captivity, Jade finds out that the zombies the Brotherhood have captured have a natural leader, something she hasn't observed before, and the wild zombies that she studies, like the ones that she roasted back in episode one. I think she's controlling them. We also see Baxter help Jade and give her some backstory. Do you have kids? As I do. Charlie and Cardi. And we know what that means. Dead man walking. Umbrella takes care of me so I can take care of them. <laughs> so she and Baxter break out of their cell. Just call me the master of unlocking. <laughs> And Jade picks up the zombie leader's head so she can study it. Warning, whiplash, we're going to the past again. Now, if you're wondering how Billy is doing, I'm proud to announce that after two straight episodes of throwing up blood, she's finally starting to piece it together. I think something's wrong with me. Way to go, Billy. Episode five is where the show really drags. The entire episode is a flashback. I don't know why I got my tonsils out. And the doctor said I had to sleep. But it hurts. 
hurt so much. Don't worry, we're gonna skip over most of it and only focus on the important bits. At one point, Jade and Billy find Albert's secret lab and they find a video of their dad acting kind of different. If she tries anything, shoot the bitch. Dad's an asshole. The video shows Albert killing Lisa, a character from the first Resident Evil game. It's weird, every 30 minutes or so in this series, they throw in a reminder that I'm watching a Resident Evil show. And it's so dissatisfying because the references will just come out of left field and they're over almost instantly. Some examples include a brief liquor appearance and the Chainsaw Man from Resident Evil 4. It's cool to see them, I guess, but it kind of feels like someone working on the show had to twist the producer's arms to get them included. They're not relevant to the main story in any way, and they're on screen for such an inconsequential amount of time, a lot of viewers will instantly forget that they were even on the show. It ends up coming across like fan service instead of a loving homage. It's mostly just research articles. A lot of stuff by some guy named William Birkin. Standards. Like, wow, it's a typewriter. What a love letter to Resident Evil, y'all. I don't know, maybe I'm being too skeptical, but I'm just gonna need more from the show if they want me to feel like they have any interest in the source material beyond using it to make inane references. I understood that reference. So after watching the Lisa video, they find out Albert's been keeping their blood, and he eventually finds them there. What are you doing here? Jade and Billy overpower him and tie him to a chair, where they find out that they were genetically engineered by Albert to give them... Advantages. Then why are you taking our blood? But they let him go, though. <laughs> It's okay, it's your mad scientist dad keeping cabinets full of your blood in his secret underground lab. I'm sure he's, I mean, what harm could he possibly do out there on the streets? Okay, the flashback is over. We're back with future Jade, who, by the way, has been captured again. Um, are you ready to meet her captor? Hey, wait a second, it's her sister, Billy. She kind of bad though. <laughs> Last I saw you, you were 18 and pregnant with two busted out front teeth. Oh, so it seems like they're still not on great terms. Fuck off. Twins. I swear, most of the dialogue in this show is squabbling. It's either Billy and Jade squabbling, or Albert and Evelyn squabbling, or Jade and Albert squabbling, or future Jade squabbling with literally any character she meets. It's just constant drama, and this is one of the main problems with the show. Its tone is way off. Think of how much random cutscene squabbling there are in the early Resident Evil games. There's not much, at all. Uh, for as cheesy and as badly written as the Resident Evil characters can be in the games, they usually don't have this much incessant bickering. Netflix's Resident Evil show is written a lot more like a CW drama than a Resident Evil property, and that makes sense because it was written by someone who wrote CW dramas, so. Anyway, future Billy has a heart-to-heart -heart with future Jade. Jade, when I chose Umbrella, I chose wrong. I should have picked you. I never stop being your sister. And lets her just walk out the front door. Jade. Get in. We've been looking for you. And the Oscar goes to. We've been looking for you. Jade's people find her literally 10 steps outside Umbrella's secret underground bunker. What were they even doing there? Mm, I should just learn by now not to ask these questions. Jade's people take her to reunite with her husband and daughter, and it's about literally three minutes before she and her husband start fighting. I knew I couldn't just run away. I knew I had to go back and get it. Otherwise, it all would have been for nothing, and I didn't do that for me. I did that for her. Future Jade gets back to work in the lab on the ship, where she finds out that her lab partner, Rita, is pregnant. Uh-oh. Someone helping Jade and is given some backstory. We know how this usually plays out. It's not looking good for Rita. So Rita and Jade start researching the zombie head before, oops, Jade has to go see her daughter's piano recital. She stays for literally three minutes before she bounces to go back to the lab. She's so hard to root for. All right, a lot of science things happen in these scenes, but basically uh, future Jade ends up bringing a waterlogged zombie for her research when her daughter wanders in. What did you do? Hey, it's okay. You stay right there. 
by the door. And of course she doesn't just stay by the door. The zombie escapes and Rita ends up getting killed. What a surprise. It was about at this point that I was completely done rooting for Jade as a character, and I was also completely done with the show's writers, but thankfully, I stuck it out for episode seven, and this right here, this is the best part, and the only redeeming quality of Netflix's Resident Evil show. Since when are you such a scaredy cat? Hey, bro. Hey, welcome back. I'm wearing a different shirt. So as you may have guessed at the end of episode six, Albert has a clone and his name is Bert. Bert. A shrimp curry burrito, really? That smell is never going away. Bert's kind of a goofball. And if you're wondering whether Albert is also a clone, I'm pleased to announce that you are correct. And I'd like to introduce you to the original. This scene is so great, mostly because we get to see Lance Reddick brilliantly playing three clones of the same guy. And because we also finally get to see some classic Matrix moves from Wesker. Albert Wesker, this is an unauthorized use of umbrella property. Put your hands up, do it now! Basically, Umbrella captured Wesker's clones and put them to work, including the Alberts that we've seen all season. And suddenly, it all makes sense. Jade! Jade! He was never the real Albert Wesker. He was a clone. And a clone twist would ruin any other storyline, but it actually saves this one. Allow me to explain. Albert's clone, Bert, breaks out of his Umbrella prison to pick up the girls from school. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? And then they all go to Olive Garden. These are legit. Excuse me, more breadsticks. I still can't believe this scene is real. It's amazing. Uh, the girls are suspicious. Something's not right with dad, but they can't put their finger on what? You girls want one of my sticks while we wait? But after they finally confront Bert, he admits it. I'm not your dad. Bert even reveals what happened to the original Wesker. He died in a volcano. It's okay though, he wasn't very nice. Before delivering the most poignant line of the whole show. I think we all have a choice. We can choose who we are, who we want to be. And I choose breadsticks. Stay the fuck away from us. Jade! Jade! But don't worry, even though the girls don't trust him, Bert defends their honor anyway. At least until Umbrella's goons apprehend him again. Peace. Peace. Time's over, Bert. I don't like you. You're not nice to me. Now, before we reluctantly check back in with future Jade, I just want to say that for all the ribbing and all the trash talking that I've done in this video about this show, I can recognize cinematic greatness when I see it. And the Olive Garden breadstick scene, bravo, bravo. It almost made the rest of it worth it. Almost. <sighs> so. Future Jade. We have to press the button. She starts banging on and on about pressing some mysterious button, and you have to wonder how she feels like she's in any position to call the shots after what happened to Rita. But uh, yeah, just get ready for her to mention this button a lot. The ship's crew lock Jade up for her own good, but she's so scared about Umbrella finding them that she tells her daughter to abandon ship by herself so she won't get captured by Umbrella. Mind-blowing strategy, honestly. So anyway, the ship's crew hand Jade over to Umbrella while her daughter packs up to leave, but Jade's not done talking about the button. And press that fucking button, okay? Now, if you thought the breadstick scene was amazing, get ready for another incredible scene. Jade is taken to see Evelyn. Let's just say she does something a little unexpected. Now, I promised you an explanation at the beginning of this video, and the context is that Billy is mind controlling Evelyn. So what? You're controlling Evelyn? Which means you're running Umbrella. I told you, it's stupid even with context. Now, Billy exchanges some villain monologue quips with Jade. I know what you're thinking. I look good. 
before Jade throws down some pocket sand and it ends up attracting a zombie horde. Aww, I almost forgot this show was about zombies. So it's Umbrella soldiers versus zombies, and Umbrella ends up eventually winning, mostly because Billy ends up bringing in these drones and frankly, cheating her way to victory. Although Billy does use the drones to shoot her own soldiers, which is just so girl boss of her, am I right? Anyway, Jade escapes the tiny island that Umbrella's on and gets back on the boat with her husband. And you would think the first thing she would do is check in on B, her daughter, who she told to abandon ship by herself, but no, she has bigger priorities. Jade! Press the fucking button. What the hell does Jade's precious button even do? Well, it releases a giant biological weapon crocodile they've been carrying underneath the ship, of course. Duh. You know, giant crocodile? Like the one in the Resident Evil 2 game? Don't forget, this is a Resident Evil show. Look, here's a tyrant in a vat. Remember when you see that in the first game? Hope you're happy with the bones you're being thrown, Resident Evil fans. Now, if you'll excuse us, it's back to the Billie Eilish self-insert. There's a lot going on with past Billy and Jade, a lot of details I won't bore you with, but I did want to point out this funny scene. So this umbrella scientist, right, is taking a look at Billy and says the T-virus isn't attacking her cells. So Evelyn tells him to find out, get creative. And what he does next is a real head scratcher. He tells her to relax and gives her a shot that makes her convulse. I gave her a shot of adrenaline. <laughs> what? You were told to get creative and your idea was to give her a shot of adrenaline? Anyway, Billy stabs him. Time for some more Bert. Maybe life's just a, a bunch of accidents and tragedies and no one's really okay. We're all just doing our best. Isn't Bert just the best? Can we get a Burt spinoff, please? So finally, the whole Wesker clan gets reunited at Umbrella HQ, and we're all ready for our climactic final showdown with Evelyn, who just wants... A little fucking respect! But, oh no, Billy bites Hacker Boy! She bit me. And Albert offers to fix it, as long as Evelyn lets the girls go, but she just shoots him in the head. Well, I mean, he was a character that was helping Jade and was given a little backstory, so... Hacker boy had to die. Them's the rules. So the Weskers start running for their lives again, and I gotta say, the girls run a lot in this show, and you can tell they kind of enjoy it. They're always, they're always like throwing their elbows up, like really selling it. They eventually get cornered, and Albert seemingly blows himself up along with the Umbrella Lab in the end, but not before one last bit of pointless fan service. Find her. What's this? A character from the video games? How surprising to see one in the show called Resident Evil. Speaking of references though, you're probably wondering how that giant crocodile is doing, and I'm proud to report that the croc is on the island now. Back on the boat, Jade finally realizes that her daughter, B, left the ship just like she told her to, and guess what? She's on the island! Where the giant crocodile is! Let's check back in with notorious animal rights activist, Billy Wesker, to see how she's getting on. Well, it looks like she's sicking drones on the crocodile, throwing grenades at the crocodile, launching rockets at the crocodile. It's funny, I guess meat isn't murder anymore, now that the plot doesn't call for it, huh? Although you could make the argument that the dog attacking her in episode one made her rethink how she felt about animals, which is a solid argument and everything. I'm just convinced that it was probably an afterthought in the writer's room, that's all. Jade goes back to the island to rescue B, who she sent there in the first place, and they're reunited just in time for Billy to show up and start bickering with Jade again. And unfortunately, I found myself agreeing a lot with Billy's evil villain monologue. Me ever notice how everyone around you somehow dies? I actually did notice that. Gold star for me. It's still always the fucking Jade show. Damn, she's got you there, Jade. Like, I know I'm supposed to be on Jade's side here and everything, but like I said earlier in the video, it's just so hard to sympathize with her character. I mean, we're sitting here with Jade's daughter, who she put in danger herself, and I honestly think that maybe B might be better off with Billy? Oh, it's happening. Oh, they're literally doing that. Oh, okay, cool. Good ending in my opinion. And that's how season one of the official Resident Evil TV show ends. 
So, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I don't blame you. There's a lot to discuss here. On one hand, there's a lot to make fun of. I mean, the Dua Lipa dancing, the edgy teen dialogue, like the infamous Zootopia line. I mostly just read Zootopia porn, so. Uh, there's a lot of camp here, and I actually don't have a problem with the camp. It's entertaining, and the early games have a ton of it. But my biggest gripe, my biggest complaint with the Netflix Resident Evil show is that it uses so little of the rich source material and instead only uses the game lore to make brief references or throw in some fan service. It's just not a Resident Evil adaptation at all. It's more of a supplementary spin-off what-if scenario. I'd love to someday see a true adaptation like what HBO seems to be doing with The Last of Us. And I don't get why with video games in general and with Resident Evil in particular, they're so reluctant to do a one-to-one -one adaptation like that. To be fair though, we did get Bert and his passion for unlimited breadsticks at Olive Garden. But if you heard me say that sentence and I were to ask you to guess what TV show I'm talking about, would you ever guess Resident Evil? In conclusion, it's not the show that we wanted, but it's the show that we know, you know what? We didn't even deserve it, okay? Resident Evil fans have been through enough, but at least we'll get to see Ada Wong in season two. And, and she's, she's better. She's happier. She's a fucking zombie. There, there, did you hear that? They said the word zombie. Now if that word zombie exists in their vocabulary, then why do they call them zeros? Did nobody ask this question at any point during the show? Why would they use the term zombie to describe something, but then not use it to describe the creatures that are literally zombies? 